Have you ever wondered about the Columbia Pictures woman? Why is she in the clouds? Why is she dressed like some kind of goddess? Why is she holding a torch like the Statue of Liberty? What about that Pegasus? Are they related? They look to be. Everything about this logo invites questioning. Well, today I'm going to answer some of those questions and explain a little about the history of this logo. So who is she? Well, the answer is she's Columbia. Well, who's Columbia? Columbia was an early American female personification of the United States of America. She stood for American ideals, one of which being enlightenment, hence the torch. But Columbia was never really that defined. She was pretty flexible and was used to take up just about any cause. The reason you don't really hear much about her anymore is once the Statue of Liberty went up, she pretty much replaced Columbia as a female symbol of America. If you look at the earlier versions of this logo, she wears a flag rather than a Greek looking robe. That makes it much clearer she's meant to be an American symbol. However, in the 1940s, federal law was passed making it illegal to wear an American flag as clothing, so it was changed to an ordinary cloth. I'm sure you're wondering why anyone could possibly care enough to pass a law like that, but what I'm wondering is why that law apparently extended to fictional women in film logos. But what about that face? Why does she have that face that seems to draw you in? Whose face is that? Well, many, many women have modeled as Columbia over the years, including semi-known actresses like Evelyn Venable, who you might know as the voice of the Blue Fairy in Pinocchio, and also complete unknowns. The story of the face we all know is a pretty interesting one. In 1976, Columbia retired the Torch Lady for a number of years. She returned in 1981, but the one we all know first appeared in 1992. When Sony bought Columbia Pictures, as well as TriStar, they decided they needed some new logos. The logo was painted digitally, and graphic artist Jenny Joseph modeled for it on her lunch break. She was wrapped in an ordinary bedsheet and held up a desk lamp as the torch. The face, though, is not hers. Michael J. Diaz, the illustrator hired to create the logo, constructed a composite face made up of several computer-generated features. I can only assume that's why the face always stood out to me as a kid. He also created the cloud background, and it is the same one used in the TriStar logo. Just for a little bonus, here's a little history on that Pegasus. TriStar means three stars, but the reason a Pegasus was chosen was because executive Victor Kaufman simply liked horses. At the same time as the new Columbia logo was being made, they introduced the new TriStar logo. This used footage of a real horse combined with photos of feathers and digital paint to create the wings. The cloud background also comes from real footage shot from the East Maui volcano. 